Hello everyone, we will continue our topic Pathogenicity and Virulence. I am Dr. Sharad Deshmukh from SS Jaiswal College, Arjuni Moore. So in today's lecture, we will continue the determinants of the virulence. We have already seen adhesion, invasiveness, toxigenicity, enzymes, antiphagocytic factor and survival within the phagocytes. We have already discussed earlier these uh, all factors. Today we are going to discuss about the infecting dose, genetic factor, route of infection and communicability. So now let us start with the next factor that is the infecting dose. We have already discussed this one earlier also the regarding the infective dose. The successful infection require that an adequate number of bacteria should gain the entry into the host. We have already studied that infecting dose the optimal number of bacteria if they enter into the body then and only then they can establish the infection and once they establish the infection can result into the disease. So for the successful infection they require the adequate number of the organism. Uh, doses may be estimated as MID that is minimum infecting dose or MLD that is minimum lethal dose. So these doses are measured as MID and the MLD. So these doses are more correctly estimated as ID50 and LD50 due to the considerable variation in susceptibility exhibited by the animals. So in the ID50, LD50 we are already seen. Infecting dose means minimum number of bacteria required to establish the infection. And LD50 means minimum number of the organisms required to kill the 50% of the experimental animal. So in this way we have already studied this MID, MLD, ID50 and LD50. To, for successful infection the adequate number of the organism should gain the entry into the host that is the infecting dose. The next one the factor is the genetic factor. This is also most commonly contributing to the virulence. So genes coding for some virulence characteristic may be the plasmid born, particularly these genes are in the form of the plasmid. Everybody we know that what is the plasmid? It is an extra chromosomal genetic material which carry one or more than one gene and that is responsible for the virulence of the organism. So best example here, the surface antigens are responsible for the colonization of the intestinal mucosa by E. coli. Although the E. coli are normally present in the intestine, certain strains of E. coli they are having the specific plasmid that code a specific the colonizing factor and so that they can adhere to the mucosa. Secondly, these uh, plasmid which are possessed by these E. coli, they code for a specific toxin that is the enterotoxin. It is also found in the Staphylococcus aureus. So enterotoxin is produced by the E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus that are able to cause the infection and can produce the gastroenteritis. Although the E. coli which is normally present but they do not carry this plasmid. But those E. coli which are carrying this plasmid which is coding the enterotoxin are able to produce the gastroenteritis. Then another one is the R plasmid that is the resistant plasmid. So this plasmid is responsible for the drug resistance. So R plasmid increases the severity of the clinical disease by their resistance to the antibiotic therapy. So the, when the bacteria acquire the resistance to more than one antibiotic, it becomes difficult to treat the patient. If they carry such plasmid, they will become resistant to the multiple antibiotic and that's why the antibiotic therapy become difficult and they can establish the infection easily. So presence of R plasmid also increases the severity of the clinical disease. Those bacteria which carry this plasmid. Then another example is the bacteriophages. The bacteriophage gene that is the phage directed virulence is seen in diphtheria bacilli that is cornebacterium diphtheri. The, the gene is for the toxin production is present in the beta phage that is the prophage. So this bacteriophage is as a prophage 
that get incorporated into the genome of the cornebacterium diphtheri. Those cornebacterium diphtheri strains possess this beta phage, they are able to cause the disease diphtheria because this gene is responsible for the virulence of this organism. If these diphtheria bacilli do not possess this beta phage, such diphtheria bacilli are a virulent. So, in this way, the presence of the plasmid that is uh, responsible for the production of the various toxins, then the R plasmid which is responsible for the resistant to antibiotic and other example I mentioned the bacteriophages which are present in the genome of the bacilli, they are responsible for the virulence of the bacteria that is referred as the genetic factor responsible for the virulence. The next one we will see about the root of infection. We also seen the various modes of infection and in this case the some bacteria can survive and multiply only when introduced by the optimal root. So, the organism can cause the infection and establish the infection and they produce the disease only when they enter into the human body by the specific root. For example, here we have mentioned cholera vibrio that is vibrio cholerae are infective orally but are unable to cause the infection when introduced subcutaneously. So, the vibrio cholerae can cause the disease only when they are entering into the human body by the oral root. Why other root like subcutaneously they are not able to cause the any infection and any disease. So, root of infection plays the important role in the uh, infection produced in the human being and resulting into the disease. So, they also differ in the ability to damage the different organs. So, root of infection also varies and that can differ in the damage to the different organs in the different species of the animals. So, best example here is the tubercle bacilli. When they are inoculated into the rabbit, they cause the lesions mainly in the kidneys. While in guinea pigs, the lesions are mainly in the liver and the spleen. So, this root of infection also shows they can cause the damage to the different organ in the different species. So, that is another example of the root of infection. But there are certain exceptions to this also. The some bacterial species like streptococci can initiate the infection whatever may be the mode of entry. We have already seen this example of the streptococcus pyogens when they cause the wound infection that can result into the septicemia. So, streptococci can initiate the infection whatever may be the mode of entry. Here there is no question of what is the mode of the organism. Although we have mentioned in the vibrio cholerae only they should enter by the orally and then only then they can establish the infection. But streptococci is the exception. The next one is the communicability. This is also the most common factor. The communicability means the ability of a parasite to spread from one host to another is known as the communicability. If it is highly communicable, then that will involve the large number of the population to produce the disease and it determines the survival and distribution of the parasite in a community if they are highly communicable. So, there is a no correlation exists between the virulence and communicability. So, although here we have mentioned that they are highly communicable means they are able to spread and maintain the parasite in the community, but as such there is no virulence and the communicability correlation. The presently we have seen that the COVID-19 that virus causing this disease is highly communicable, but the virulence power may differ, not necessarily it should be the highly virulent. So, as such there is no correlation exists between the virulence and the communicability of a particular organism causing the disease. The infection in which the pathogen is said in secretion, they are generally highly communicable. So, mainly in the respiratory and intestinal diseases are highly communicable. The present in the example is the COVID-19 disease caused by the organism that is they are spreading by the respiratory route. That is why it is highly communicable. That is they are uh, inhaled and they are process of the respiration and responsible for the spreading of the infection so rapidly they are highly communicable. So, in this way 
थैंक यू वेरी मच वी हैव कंप्लीटेड टुडेज लेक्चर